is because you've always sounded the drum, you know, like the tom, dum, dum, dum. You've been warning everybody, warning everybody, warning everybody. But in the last, I would say, year, the, your pounding has gotten louder. The message is similar, but your warnings are more dire, louder, more um, direct. So that's what we want to talk to you about today is how dire are we, what kind of, where are we today? What is happening? Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So uh, the one thing I, was, I had a question on, you, you talked about Executive Order 14067. What is the your concern on Executive Order 14067, which was just signed in as with Biden and company? Only a few months ago, what what is the, your concern? One four zero six seven. They're going to know what you're buying, right? Because every product has a you know a, a SKU, a, a, you know, stock keeping code, a stock keeping unit code, you know, with a with a you know a QR scan, digital scan. They're going to know what you're buying, uh, and this digital currency is programmable, meaning they can block certain purchases or not. So let's say you. Uh, uh, you know, donate money to Elise Stefanik. She's an up-and-coming Republican member of the Republican leadership at an upstate district in New York, or I mean, help you if you donate money to Donald Trump. Uh, well, they <laughs> might, they'll know that, first of all, and you might find that your account's frozen. Uh, or let's say they want to, uh, see right now, if you work and you, you know, you're an employee, it's a technical term defined, and you get paid and you get a W-2 at the end of the year, and, but they withhold it from your payment. I mean, they get paid every two weeks or whatever. They withhold, employer withholds taxes from your wages. And then you file your, you get your W-2, file your tax return, you reconcile, and maybe you get a refund, maybe you owe a little bit. But they got the money up front through withholding. But that's not true for independent contractors and professionals, so doctors, lawyers, architects, you know, landscaping, sir. And anybody who's not W-2 employee doesn't have withholding. They got to pay their taxes. Um, but what if they could just take it out of your bank account? It's like, yeah, okay, you're a doctor, but you know, you put the money in this bank and I'm just going to take, you know, some number, 20% of out of your bank account every month. And yeah, fi- you know, we'll send you a statement, 1099, file your tax return and you know, you owe or you get a refund, but no more honor system. In other words, uh, no more waiting till year end. We're going to take it out of your bank account. Or what if, um, as a form of stimulus, even though it's not stimulus, but they'll call it that, they say you get money in your bank account. Okay, but we're going to put a, a countdown clock on your bank account. And if you don't spend 10% of it in the next 30 days, we're going to deduct, you know, that much. So in other words, use it or lose it. So now all of a sudden, like, yeah, I worked hard. I've made this money. It's in the bank. But you're telling me if I don't spend it, I'm going to lose it anyway. So I might as well go spend it. And of course, that... The idea is to stimulate the economy. But the point is, the number of things you can do from surveillance to identifying your political preferences, um, withholding taxes, account freezes, account seizures, um, you know, time limitations on your money, your money's countdown clock, it expires after a certain period of time, et cetera. I could go on and on, but but you, you take the point, which is, it, it's not your money anymore. I, I tell, I've always said to people, you put your money in the bank, it's not your money, it's the bank's money, and they'll give it to you if they feel like it. Well, this is that same idea on stilts. And this is like, yeah, and now the government's involved and it's easier, fa- everything easier, faster, cheaper about payments is also easier, faster, cheaper about surveillance, confiscation, account freezes, et cetera. And then people say to me, you know, they explain that when I just said to, to you guys, and they say, oh, that'll never happen. It's already happening. I mean, it's already here. Uh, talk to the, the Freedom Convoy in, in Canada, what my uh, yeah. neo-fascist friend, Christy Freeland, who's the Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister, did to the Freedom Convoy. Now, okay, they pulled into Ottawa in the middle of winter, and I, I was just in Ottawa a couple of days ago, by the way. It's a pretty city, but pretty small, actually. Um, yeah, they stalled traffic. They blew the horns at three in the morning. Uh, all Trudeau had to do was come out, say, who are your leaders, meet with them, hear their demands, give them a few, not all. They would all go home and that would be the end of it. He didn't do that. He went into hiding. Uh, he's, he's sort of a coward. He's not very smart. But Christopher <laughs> Freeland is a, uh, 
uh, a tough cookie, put it to put it in polite terms. Um, and um, she called the banks in Canada. Now, the difference between Canada and the U.S., they only have five big banks. We've got like 5,000 or something. But there it's, you know, CIBC, Royal Bank of Canada, you know, Bank of Montreal, Nova Scotia, and TD. Um, she called the banks, identified the bank accounts of the truckers, um, and froze all their accounts. She didn't stop there. She then called the crypto exchanges because, you know, I know co- what cold wallets are, but a lot of people put their money in crypto exchanges got their names, froze their crypto accounts, seized their trucks. They couldn't feed their family. They were put in jail, hell without bail. They literally couldn't feed their family in the middle of winter, all because of a nonviolent protest. And when I emphasize there was no violence, yeah, annoying. Yeah. So give them a, a give them a traffic citation for blowing your horn at three in the morning, the five hundred dollar fine, you know, appear in court, whatever. Uh, I'm not saying there shouldn't have been any accountability, but um, being held in jail without bail, where all of your money has been frozen, your assets have been seized, they're non-returnable, and you can't feed your family for what a non-violent protest. But my but my point is, and that's an exercise in fascism, of course. But my point is that they did it all through digital banking systems and and cryptocurrency systems. So and they're doing it in China. They have what's called a social credit score. So if you uh, you know bad acts are you know, start with smoking, <laughs> you're smoking, but um, you take a train to go to a protest, okay? About and there are there are w- many runs on the bank. There's a not there's a group in China informing don't pay your mortgages because I mean in China it's a little different because here a builder builds a house and you guys you build a house a buyer comes along buys the house gets a mortgage pays the mortgage but they get the house in china you take out your mortgage before the house is built and then you owe the money but the down payment is, and the mortgage money is used by the builder to build the house and you move in like a year or two later but you're already on the hook for the mortgage except that the developer stole the money and didn't finish the houses but the banks are saying you got to pay the mortgage and people are saying no. So, so people are traveling around China to join these protests, but um, in China you have a social credit score. So they identify you through the banking system and then turn off your ability to buy a train ticket or a plane ticket. And then it goes on from there. You put, you post something, you know, the worst thing you do in China is compare, uh, Chairman Xi to Winnie the Pooh, he kind of looks like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> so, uh, it's true. So if you post a Winnie the Pooh uh, meme or something, uh, good luck getting your kids into school. Good luck uh, getting health care for yourself, uh, you'll, et cetera. So my, my point is this is already being done. And then people say it'll never happen here. Why not? Show me something that was really poorly done uh, abroad that isn't being done here sooner than later, particularly with the Biden administration. So I'll I'll leave it at that. But the point is, this is more than just a digital currency. This is more than just uh, convenience and cost savings, which it is. That's how they sell it. Uh, This gives them total surveillance, total control. It's the ultimate realization of the total surveillance state. And uh, just look at what they did to Russia. I don't want to debate the war in Ukraine, but they froze the Treasury notes held by the Central Bank of Russia. Well, what's the difference between that and default? Like, why do you buy a treasury note? Well, you buy them because you think the treasury is going to give you your money back uh, and with interest. Um, but when they freeze them, they're like, well, no, actually, we're not giving you your money back. So what's the difference between that and default? I would say there is no difference. Uh, so we've kind of already defaulted on treasury notes. Yes, yeah, selectively with a political wrapper around it. I get it. Um, but uh, and given what's going on in China, Europe, uh, and, and the U.S. sanctions on Russia, which are tan- tantamount to a default, tell me they're not going to use um, this digital dollar for political enforcement. And the answer is they will. 